Hi, this is Kevin with Wordvice. Today we're going to be looking at how to write a tight, strong, concise journal submissions cover letter. Cover letters can impact an editor's decision to review your study and ultimately decide whether or not it gets published in a journal. This video will explain, one, why you should care about writing a powerful cover letter, two, what you should include in the letter, and three, how exactly you can structure it. And we're going to be looking at a sample cover letter to give you an idea of what the real thing looks like. Why does a cover letter even matter? Well, while your research paper's role is to prove the merits of your work, a strong introductory cover letter is the key to getting your foot in the door. It will help you highlight the significance of your study and give the editor a reason to read further. Part of the decision-making process about whether or not to publish an article is based on a business model, and editors must therefore accept articles that will interest their readership. So your cover letter is the one golden opportunity to really convince these editors that your work is worthy of further review. So let's talk about what you should include in your cover letter. The most important thing to remember is to follow your target journal's guide for authors. No matter what other advice you read online, make sure you prioritize the information requested by the editors. Failure to include required statements will lead to automatic rejection, and that is obviously something you want to avoid. Here is a list of the most common elements you must include and what information you should not include. Editor's name when known, the name of the journal to which you are submitting, the title of your manuscript, article type, whether it's review, research, case study, etc., the submission date, which is usually the same day as your cover letter is sent, a brief background of study and research question, a brief overview of methodology that you used in the study, principal findings and significance to the scientific community, that is, how your research advances our understanding of a concept, corresponding information about other authors involved in the study, and a prior and current publishing status of your paper. Indicate that your paper has not been previously published and is not currently under consideration by another journal, and that all authors involved have approved of and have agreed to submit the manuscript to this journal. In addition to these essential elements, there is a lot of other information that is commonly requested. To see this list in greater detail, visit wordvice.com and read the articles on the journal cover letter. Here are some on our resources page. Here are some things you should avoid when writing your cover letter. Don't use too much jargon or include too many acronyms. Be sure not to over-embellish your findings or their significance. Avoid words such as novel, first ever, and paradigm change. These types of statements show bias and will make the editor question your ability to assess your work's merits objectively. Don't drop names. Listing people who might endorse your paper and discussing authors' reputations do not interest editors. They want to know if your content fits their criteria, so focus solely on addressing that point. Don't write too much in the letter. The letter is only meant to be an introduction and brief overview. So although you should adequately explain your work and its significance, keep the cover letter to one page in length or less. Always keep a professional tone and don't try to be too entertaining. Although a joke may lighten the mood, it also has too much potential to go wrong. So now let's talk about how to structure your cover letter. Overall, you want to use formal language when writing this letter. You should also be aware that structure for emailed cover letters will differ from those of PDF or hard copy. You can find those formatting differences on many websites, including our resources page. So here is a sample of the journal submissions cover letter. On the left-hand side in green is the sample we have composed. On the right is the information that you need to input. And here in the black is the template language you can use when making your own cover letter. The first part of the letter is the address, and you must include the graduate degree of the person to whom you are sending the letter, the position at the journal, the name of the journal, the journal's address, and the submission date. So let's look at the sample. Edith Warshaw, PhD, Editor-in-Chief, Awesome Science Journal, the name of our hypothetical journal, Cincinnati, Ohio, 41073, June 24th, 2016. Now this date will generally be the date that you send the letter if you are submitting on that same day. In the salutation, you should keep it simple. Dear Dr. Warshaw or Ms. Warshaw. But you should note that you should not use terms such as Mrs. or Sirs as those can be presumptuous of a certain gender. In the first paragraph, you will introduce your paper. You should include your paper title, the title of the journal to which you are submitting, the type of paper that you have written, and one to two sentences that pitch or summarize the study design, your research question, your major findings, and the conclusions that you've reached. 
Again, on the left-hand side in the black is your template language, so you can include this regardless of the content of your study. I am writing to submit our manuscript entitled X marks the spot for consideration as a Journal of Education research article. The Journal of Education is the name of this journal and the type of article is a research article. Now in the section that follows here, it's only a hypothetical of your study, but you can use this as an example for what you might write about your own study. We examine the efficacy of using X factors as indicators for depression in Y subjects in Z regions through a 12-month prospective cohort study and can confirm that monitoring the levels of X is critical to identifying the onset of depression, regardless of geographical influences. As you can see here, this is only one sentence, but you can write as many as one to two sentences um, and briefly talk about the conclusions that your study has reached. In the second paragraph, you want to talk about the purpose of your research and the contribution that it will bring to this journal. That includes the context that prompted your research, the reader profile, that is the readers of this particular journal, the name of the journal, and you want to discuss the achievements of previous literature that inspired your study and the gaps in knowledge that you are filling with this study. You also want to identify the aspects of the journal's aim and scope that align with your paper. That is, the journal's readership and what the articles of the journal aim to educate as well as show further and broader use of the work in this area of research. So as you can probably tell, before you submit your paper, you want to do a lot of research about the journal to which you're submitting so that you know what the readership is and what the aims of the journals are. So let's read our example here. Given that there has been an alarming increase in depression rates among teenagers coupled with a lack of any uniform practical test for screening students, we believe that the findings presented in our paper will appeal to and this is the target audience or readership, education policymakers who subscribe to the Journal of Education or your journal. Although prior research has identified a few methods that could be used in depression screening, such as X and Y, the applications developed from those findings have been cost prohibitive and difficult to administer on a national level. So the context that prompted your research will probably differ wildly from our example here. Thus, our findings will allow your readers to understand the factors involved in identifying the onset of depression in teenagers, or whatever your study aims to identify or discuss, better and develop more cost-effective screening procedures that can be employed nationally. Here we have the template language again. In doing so, we hope that our research, now this is the aim and scope of your research, so we hope that our research advances the tool set needed to combat the concerns preoccupying the minds of many school administrators. The third paragraph of your cover letter will discuss similar works that inspired or influenced your paper. Here you need to list the authors and the title of the journal that these works are published in. Here you should list one to three authors who wrote papers related to your research, as well as all the information about these papers. You can list up to five, but you should note that every paper that you cite here should be highly relevant to your own study. So let's look at the template language. This manuscript expands on the prior research conducted and published by names of the authors in their paper, name of the paper, published in, name of the journal, and the year in which it was published. This manuscript examines a different aspect of, or takes a different approach to, the issues explored in the following papers. In the fourth paragraph, you should talk about potential reviewers and include any additional statements that are needed. This includes the reviewer's name, their institution, their email, and their expertise. So let's look at the template language. You can see this part here is all template, so you could essentially copy and paste this into your cover letter if you need. Should you select our manuscript for peer review, we would like to suggest the following potential reviewers, referees, because they would have the requisite background to evaluate our findings and interpretations objectively. And a tip we include here is that you should include three to five reviewers since the journal will likely use at least one of your suggestions. So it's better to have a wider field of reviewers from which to choose. And after listing these reviewers, you're going to talk about why you're including them. So each named author has substantially contributed to conducting the underlying research and drafting this manuscript. Additionally, to the best of our knowledge, none of the above suggested persons have any conflict of interest, financial or otherwise. This information is important to include because it tells the journal that all of your researchers are willing participants 
and that there is no legal or ethical conflicts of interest. As we mentioned earlier, there might be other information you want to include that the journal asks for in this part of the cover letter. In the fifth paragraph, you're going to ask for any frequently requested additional information. This is basically a nicety and is a good way of closing out your cover letter. If you require any additional information regarding our manuscript, please do not hesitate to contact us directly via the resources below. And lastly, it's very important to be polite as possible. So, thank you for your time and consideration. And directly below this, you're going to write sincerely and the name of the lead author of the study. And below this lead author's name, you're going to include any other authors that were included in this study. Here, Professors John Spencer and Deborah Abrams and the institution at which the study was conducted. And at the very bottom of your cover letter, you want to include these corresponding authors, the name of the institution, the institution's address, your email address, and your telephone number. So basic information. For a much more detailed rundown on what to include in this journal submissions process, please visit our resources page at this link. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If there are any other videos you would like to see on journal preparation or academic writing, feel free to leave a comment below or send us a direct message. Thanks and happy writing.